So here we are, Ren, and uh, you were just telling me that uh, you have some really interesting charts to to show us, including what they what they represent uh, and uh, some related to the current situation we're in politically, and some on deeper topics like uh, what is it that relates you know, astrologically to conspiratorial behavior, conspiracy theories, which seem to have really taken off in recent years. So I'm really curious to hear about that as well. Okay, thank you, Andre. It's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you very much. And I, your nephew, um, I believe, is uh, um, really good friends with my niece. So um, we true. have a we have a family connection. We have a family so, connection. So thanks for thank you. I I, I won't pull up the bi wheel charts of uh, Biden and so on unless you think that's really important to, uh, no, to uh, just talk about them. Yeah. So, well, just a little bit about me. I trained with Rick Tarnas uh, at Esalen Institute, um, and um, and then I I did the uh, Groff transpersonal training. Uh, um, it was one one of the very first years that of graduation of that 1989 in uh, holotropic breathwork and transpersonal psychology. And I'm a practicing archetypal astrologer. I've published some books, including the Archetypal Universe, which is is you know fairly popular right now. Uh, thank you to my readers; really appreciate it. And um, I'm offering a 22 week course this fall in archetypal and holotropic astrology. It would be an honor to have uh, anyone join that. We're teaching a four week course in Groff Studies. Um, this fall as well with four recorded courses uh sessions to go with it and two colleagues and i um mari castle and irena antelik are offering a, a sacred retreat in greece in october so if anyone wants to come to greece it's fairly inexpensive we'll be on an island for seven days and then athens for four days a uh, really interesting island with an incredibly rich history. I'm talking about archetypal astrology, how the Greeks dealt with the different planetary archetypes, both successfully and unsuccessfully. You know, they made some mistakes, you know, and, and um, as as every civilization does. And we'll be reading some great Greek verse, some of the greatest Greek verse in Greek and in English. And there'll be a, some many interesting excursions and so on. Nice, nice, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Okay, well, should we talk about Biden's chart right off the bat? Right, yeah. I mean, Biden is, a, at the moment, a, a really key topic because of the uncertainty and, you know, what happened at the debate and so on and so feel, Yeah, feel free yeah. to, to yeah. Uh, present it in the way you yeah. understand it. I, I love George Clooney's letter yesterday. I think it was in the Washington Post or New York Times, and and I feel the same way. I I love him. I I you know Biden. I I uh, I trust his morals. I trust his character. He truly is a good man, and he's given a a fifty years of good service to the country. I as Clooney said, you know, you, you saved democracy in twenty twenty. We need you to save it now in 2024 by stepping down, by not running. I think he has become too old. I didn't feel that way until the debate, but I think it is is very clear now. Um, we just can't let Trump win. I, I think the consequences would be very terrible for the United States and for the world. Um, so a little, some of Biden's interesting transits. Um during that debate on June 27th, he had transiting Mercury conjunct his Jupiter, and uh, he said he was overprepared. Now, normally, Mercury conjunct Jupiter, you might think that would be an asset for speaking eloquently and high-minded ideals. He, he did sort of, he, he was able to criticize Trump justifiably, you know, in a kind of a Jupiterian way, talk down to him and to, can understand why. But I think he probably was overprepared. He had too much in his mind. Um, so, so that's the shadow side of that Mercury-Jupiter. He also had uh, transiting Jupiter conjunct his natal Saturn, 
which can sort of fit that of sort of having a lot to say and then coming up against the sort of small <laughs> portal where there's not enough room for that to come out and it all gets blocked in there. One of the driving transits that he has, Andre, is transiting Pluto in a 120 degree trine with his natal, or opposite, sorry, a 180 degree opposition with his natal Jupiter. Now it's, we use a three to five degree orb on, on applying and separating orbs in, in archetypal astrology, a little bit wider than what people are used to, but Rick Tarnas really demonstrates the validity of this in Cosmos and Psyche. So transiting Pluto is outside of that orb right now, but will be retrograding back well within it. So he's still in that transit. Pluto opposition Jupiter can create a tremendous ambition and drive and sort of striving for success. And he had this when he handily beat Trump by seven and a half million votes in 2020. He's still under the influence of this. And it, I think it's this kind of drive that can't be turned off, <laughs> you know, and he's just determined to do it. But I, I believe he will see reason. Um, you know, my friends out there, uh, we we need to pull together and do what's right for the election. You know, that's that's what needs to happen. And and he's I don't believe he's the right man for the job anymore. I believe he will he will lose. Um, and but I think that some of his younger colleagues in the Democratic Party could handily beat Trump, even you know, clean his clock. So I think that Pluto opposition Jupiter is the reason why Biden can't get off of the sort of train of I'm the one that can win. You know, it's that ambition. One other thing that my colleague Alex Stein pointed out the other day and John Waller and I and Alex were in a call um Trump goaded him with this these golf challenges you know and it's, it's like two old men fighting over golf scores just so insane you know and we what what and then Biden took the bait and said you know I can I'm I've got this handicap and I'm this kind of a great golfer and um, Biden's transit during the debate was transiting Mars opposition, natal Mars. So that's perfect for this kind of, you know, low level, you know, Neanderthal sort of reversion to, you know, my golf club's bigger than yours. <laughs> Mars opposition, Mars. So that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Any any thoughts on, on any of that, Andre? Yeah, I I I'm with you on the 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 panorama around uh, you know the way you're describing it. Uh, I don't know what you think about the notion that the key problem at debate time was the Saturn station because Saturn stationed right on his angle and as I see there's there's been some controversy where some astrologers have made reasonable cases that it might be a little bit earlier his time because he's 1940s he says it's 8 30 p.m you you wonder but uh when, even if it's a bit earlier it's really close so that was the the hit and when you hear someone being accused of being too old of being finished you almost always will, f will find saturn uh being really strong at the time right so uh so now saturn is still in that in that region, although it's moving away slowly, we saw this effect. If we look back to Saturn last year and into this spring, it was roaming around his ascendant degrees in different ways because he has a three degree rising or so. So it was squaring in different ways at different times, went a little past and came back. Then in the spring, when it pulled away from those degrees, was concurrent with the State of the Union, he started to the, the topic disappeared uh, for a while. It came back in June again, right? So it's something to realize that th the Saturn is pulling away. Now, this is where I've been saying, if he digs in his heels, August in that sense is better than July and September is better than July. But I'm curious as to where you say, are you saying that you see him 
uh, being removed, that he himself quits. What is the astrology logic to say he's just not going to get there? You know, to yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he can be removed, but I think he will step down. I, I think that it'll it'll have. I I believe there will be some more major missteps between now and the Democratic National Convention. Okay, right. I I think it's 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 a done deal. It's just a matter of time. His, his closest friends and colleagues don't want to be disloyal to him. They don't want to hurt him. Um, but I think that the floodgates are opening. There's a lot of love for him. He's a great hero. He could retire now and be so proud of his what he's done. Um, he, he said on he he said on the Stephanopoulos interview the other day. Stephanopoulos asked him, "How would you feel if you you stay in the race and lose?" And Biden said, uh, "You know, as long as I give it my all, I that that's the main thing." And and Colbert, who was reporting this, said, "No, that isn't what's important." No. It's, that's not what's important. What's important is saving democracy. Of course, Don't, of course. Giving it your all, that's not not enough. You know? Of course. I mean, the thing with Biden is that is that the core of the man is rock solid, where it's become pretty obvious that he's, he's not as good a communicator. There was a time, if you go back, particularly if you go back to the Obama years, if anything, he talked too much. He would, he would have been out there defending his case, and he was quite articulate. In fact, I used to be impressed by how articulate Biden was, not necessarily intellectual, but really articulate going back to previous years and so forth. But by 2020, it was definitely less so. And now it's much less so. And the optics of it are really problematic. And in fact, you're totally right. All he had to say there, you know, if you're all is to say, no, 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 I'm going to win no matter what it takes, because that would reassure someone listening instead of saying, well, all I got to do is give it a crack and hope for the best. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, Biden is an immensely likable man. Um, I, I, I trust him. I feel on the same wavelength with him. He has son Venus opposition Uranus, which is that, that sparkle, that kind of uh, style, his big bright smile when he goes, hey, Jack. And, you know, yeah. Colbert is always imitating this with the sunglasses. And he also has a uh, a fairly wide Jupiter Pluto conjunction, which is like the archetype of the king, and uh, you know, so you know, many good qualities. But a, a lot of people, including many of the European leaders that he just met with in, in the NATO summit, say he's not the same as he as he was even two years ago. He he's really declined. I didn't feel that way. I, I didn't think he was too old uh, until the debate. And now I think it's a for sure thing. So are you interpreting it as when you say he, it's a matter of time? Astrologically, are, are you pinning that on the Uranus-Pluto action because he's got Uranus opposing and Pluto squaring? Uh, is that the way you read? Uh, or, or just the Saturn being close to the IC? What in the astrology leads you to think he's going to step down instead of digging in his heels, which is what he's done up to now. Yeah. With the problem. Um, it, it's not so much from the astrology, Andre. It's just uh, from what I'm seeing on, on the news. And ah, okay. I, I believe that, you know, pe people are supporting him because that's their job and also their livelihood, you know, they're on the payroll, like some of his closest supporters and, media people and so on but uh, i i think that it's just a matter of days and i he'll he'll step down he'll step down hmm. yeah I mean, oh, one 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 problem that's what i think yeah one problem is that during the democratic convention which is in august i can't remember when 21st okay that's going to be right in the thick of uh mars square saturn neptune that that can be a bit of a swampy kind of uh uh quagmire kind of energy it, mars saturn can bring in bitterness and mars neptune uncertainty i i think that I'm, I'm assuming biden assuming biden steps down whomever the democrats come up with i think can beat trump right and so they just i think everyone needs to put their bitterness and their their preferences behind and and 
if they don't get their first choice, then get behind their second choice or their third choice and 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 make this work. You know, th this is a really dicey and crucial moment. And I think they've got a couple of good options. Now, Kamala Harris is the most obvious. I really liked her when she ran against uh, Biden, you know, for the Democratic nomination, you know, six years ago or, or five years ago, whatever that was. Uh, she has a son, Mercury, trying Saturn, uh, which is very stable, measured, careful. Um, I think, she, she, you know, she has those qualities. She also has Venus conjunct Uranus Pluto. That's the Uranus Pluto, the revolutionary energies of the 60s, and Pluto, the evolutionary energies of the 60s. They were conjunct from 60 to 72. She's born in 64, and Venus is on there. You can see this, you know, she's very beautiful and and charismatic and, and stylish. She's a really good dancer. Um, I, I think she's, she's very likable. She's got, um, Jupiter opposition, Neptune, um, natally, which is very idealistic and generous. She has Mars opposition, Saturn natally, which is tough, gritty. I don't think she'll shrink from a fight. And she has moon opposition, Mercury. She's born during a almost exact full moon. Sun in Libra opposition, Moon in Aries, and Mercury is, is close to the Sun, so she has Sun Mercury opposition, Moon. Um, the sense of vitality, Moon Mercury is capacity to listen closely to people and respond on an emotional way. There's something in her voice which is sets me off a little bit, kind of a nasally whiny, complainy kind of. <laughs> I didn't notice this before. Maybe it's because she's playing second fiddle, which is what <laughs> vice presidents have to do. And she really needs to just come out and shine before the world, you know, and, and just be a leader and say, look, I'm if, if you elect me, I'll be the president for all of you. Right. I, I'm here for everybody, not just the people who voted for me. So uh, I, I would vote. <laughs> I would vote for anyone. <laughs> Almost except other than Trump. Other than Trump. <laughs> yeah. Um she's she's got a couple interesting transits up. Uh, uh, so for November 5th, um, she's got almost exact transiting Uranus conjunctor natal Jupiter, which is kind of be like a lucky breakthrough, sudden dramatic opening kind of transit. And then she's also got transiting Jupiter square her natal uranus so she's got that both ways so i think she would win i heard a a poll uh on colbert yesterday oh no it was on cnn that uh, she's one point ahead of trump if there was an election right now mm -hmm. one point ahead and um, i'm sure that will go up significantly if if she gets the nomination gets out there in public yeah what what are your thoughts on on her yeah, no, I agree that, I mean, my, my take on this has been that the Biden-Kamala ticket, it's one or the other, it doesn't matter, because if Biden is running, she being his partner uh, represents a great asset at the moment. Her transits include Jupiter through her ascending sign. Jupiter on the ascendant was Bill Clinton in 92, Obama in 08. It's a really good transit to have around when you want to be elected. This is really important. Not only that, she represents a key issue, women's issues, and she can speak to it forcefully. And notice that her Saturn is conjunct the U.S. moon, at least in the chart. I use the Sibley chart. That Saturn is next to the U.S. moon and her sun in, uh, in moon sextile and trine. So she, uh, is it the case of the Saturn, whenever you have a Saturn connect connection, it may take you a while to be accepted. You know, Saturn is kind of heavy and uh, the idea that you'll be liked right away. Maybe not true, but Saturn is stable, as you said, and then the moon and sun collect really well with that moon. The uh, U.S. is a cancer country, so the moon is really important. Uh, so therefore, to me, yes, this chart is very, very strong, either as the running mate or as the person running for election by yourself, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and especially when you compare it to Trump's, right? The only thing is, the irony to all this is that 
if I compare Biden's start November 5th to Trump's, I take a start. I prefer a start is stronger, in my opinion, than Trump's. And yet, as you say, it may be that the wisest course is for him to let her take, you know, pass the torch and let her uh, be in charge, be the, the top of the ticket, right? So yeah. that's the one oh. quandary. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautifully said. Just imagine how great it would be if she won. Biden could sink to his knees and thank God, goddess, you know, thank oh, God. Thank the gods that, that that all happened and, and then everything's in good hands. It would be like things getting back to normal. You know, Rick Tarnas said once, you know, when when Obama was elected, um, that, you know, it's part of the 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 United States ethos is ever increasing freedom, ever increasing freedom, mm -hmm. evolution, you know, right. ev evolving freedom and you know that she would be the first woman the first african-american woman and the first asian woman and and you know the you you know the world's in bad shape right now i don't know if people are watching the news but climate change is getting more and more serious and we need to take action now and every amount of support from the big governments to support the renewable energy transition um, is desperately needed. And Trump, the first thing he said was, I'll be a dictator for one day and we're going to drill, drill, drill. I believe that the oil companies and coal companies are one of the main motivating forces behind the, the Republican Party and the sort of brainwashing campaign that has basically has billionaires and multi-millionaires brainwashing and manipulating uneducated white males to vote for a party that really isn't going to help them. They don't care about poor people. They don't care about the little guy. They're in it for themselves. And they're being appealed to by emotional manipulation, not by rational, positive self-interest. Mm -hmm. so, so I think she would be fantastic. Um, can we look at another, can I just mention Gretchen Whit Whitmer? Now, I also like Gavin Newsom and I haven't looked at his chart. I think he could, he could clean Trump's clock. I, I, I've heard that he is thinking of maybe in four years. Taking it's, a it's really good now though. The, I think with Gavin Newsom, it's too good in the sense that he's got, you know, Jupiter on the, up in the 10th trining his son. I mean, that's perfect for mm -hmm. winning a, an election. Yeah. But typically you see a little more pressure. When people are running for office, you see the good aspects and you see the challenging ones. He's got a couple of things happening, but to me it feels more like this guy will have a voice, strong voice as a as a surrogate. But I I don't know that he would be, uh, you know, given the opportunity around now. Yeah. To, to, yeah. Uh, I think he would win and he, he he's an interesting guy. Um, he's, he's like, to me, he's like 0.5 of a notch too cool, too cool looking, kind of slick looking. He's a super <laughs> handsome guy, right? Just, just a little, and, and you kind of think, is this guy arrogant? You know, you, you wonder. And then when he speaks, you hear the integrity and the centeredness. He, he keeps it together, you know, but he's, he's, it's, it's kind of a perfect California governor. And, and I would love to see him as president just just down the road you know it you know in it won't be long before liz cheney and or um adam kinzinger are president you know they're the two major republicans that are speaking out against trump right mm. uh, uh so you know i i also appreciate mitt romney for his integrity in in this situation very few other republicans most of the rest have sold out for short-term gain <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah but so so there's that but uh so gavin newsom yeah it doesn't sound like he he's interested at this point but who knows um so gretchen whitmer she was on colbert last night mm. and i really liked her she's tough you know there was a plot to storm the michigan legislature by some redneck militia guys in michigan and yeah. um, kill her 
And, uh, you know, they, uh, I think the FBI, uh, you know, intercepted them and everything. And she was cool customer under that pressure. Her, the secretary of state up there is super interesting and admirable too. They're an amazing team that, that, that woman forgot her name. But uh, so I've looked at her chart for the first time. What an incredible stellium here. Sun, Sun in Virgo conjunct Venus and Leo, and then Mer uh, and, and then Mercury in a triple conjunction, and then she's got Pluto, Moon, Uranus also conjunct, kind of as uh, not too far away. One of her major transits is uh, for November is transiting Uranus square her Sun. Venus. Uh, uh, she has so much charisma, so much flash, and so immensely likable and confident. You, that Uranus square sun Venus, I, I think, you know, if she was up there, she would just win over the country through her charm. And I mean, she sees a lot of substance too. Um, she said transiting Pluto, trying Pluto, you know, that sort of early, early 50s, uh, trying that everyone gets in their early 50s she has natally um jupiter neptune conjunction like kamala harris this is very idealistic and generous and and far-seeing but opposition saturn which brings it down to earth it's like as angeles arian used to say walking the mystical path with practical feet mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, immensely witty and fun and uh, can crack jokes and 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 just looks just so on top of her game. She would be my slight first choice um, out of all of them. I even more than Gavin Newsom because she would get so many uh, women voters, you know. And um, I'm really happy with Kamala Harris, though. Um, I think they would both win against Trump. So yeah, what do you what do you think about her? Oh yeah, no, I, I what, what you're saying, uh, I I agree. Uh, I just suspect here's where I'm putting my political knowledge hat on, and what I keep hearing is that the mechanics of anyone other than Kamala, you know, to replace Biden would be extremely difficult because of the financial constraints and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but that she's a uh, really competent. Oh, I mean, absolutely. There's no question. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could also, the thing is though, do you have a time for a chart? I have, I have only her day. Uh, the, the chart that I have is just a day chart without a. Yeah. I got mine from Astro themes. I've got 851 PM. So 851 eight, PM. Eight Aries ascendant. And I'm not sure if that's a AA data or, or something right, 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 right. Yeah. but but anyways yeah i i think it'll be kamala right because it's an easy succession and and like the donors have already given to the biden harris team right. and everything but i i just hope that all the democrats will pull together and cooperate and if they if it comes down to a vote of the delegates at, at their convention in august then everyone should accept the winner and just go full straight ahead into history right. you know yeah um yeah. a couple yeah so a couple of things about trump's transits or, or you were going to say something oh no i yeah I, i'm i'm in concurrence go ahead yeah with trump's transits sure Tr trump's had saturn square sun all spring mm -hmm. <laughs> it hasn't helped it hasn't hurt his popularity among his base so weird um it it's a rebellious time you know Public the Law and Order Party to to get more behind a candidate because he's being indicted mm -hmm. is very strange. But he's had Saturn square Sun. Saturn's now out of orb of that square, but um, because Saturn is retrograded, but it it will be coming back in, in archetypal astrology. Once you, a transit begins, it's still in effect until it ends the final time. Oh, yeah, Just that, because it retrogrades out of orb, you're still in the transit. Yeah, so, that's that's any astrology. I mean, you can call it archetypal. Yeah. That's just an yeah. astrology yeah. rule that yeah. I've yeah. used for years yeah. and years. And you can yeah. see all kinds of evidence. Uh, if mm -hmm. you look in history of things that happened 
and you'll see that the planet looks like it's not there. Just look in the ephemeris. If it was there already, it's there. So yeah, yeah. We well, you've got good instincts and long yeah. experience. So um, it's not like they just go on and off like light switches. No, no, exactly. So, so he still got Saturn's course on during the election, and that, that can be a bit challenging. You know, he's got Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Sun, <laughs> Jupiter conjunct his son Uranus, and he had that all lit up uh, during his last win. I think he had his Jupiter return, and and uh, I think maybe transiting Uranus opposition his natal Jupiter. I can't remember, but he had a lot of that going on. It was a really unexpected win, you know. I think probably even for him. So so that you know that on one hand that looks like it could be kind of a winning time. But it, it could also be a time when he gets let off the hook. Because he has no business being president. He's not qualified for this job. He's creating more bad karma for himself through through screwing up the the future of the planet with climate change. He, he doesn't want that. I, it would be better for him and the country if, if he got let off the hook by losing the election. One, one of the one of the shadow sides of that Jupiter conjunct Uranus sun is it could be impulsive excess. He could become overconfident um, and do something really stupid, more stupid than usual. Um, it's very possible, like, I don't know, a Sig Heil or, or something, you know. In, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, a swastika on his forehead? Kind of a... <laughs> Apparently admires Hitler in some ways. Oh, he had, yeah, totally. yeah, he had a book of Hitler's sayings apparently by his bed. This is, I think, John Kelly reported that his chief of staff. I mean, this is not just a rumor. Um, he he admires dictators. Yeah. Who the hell admires dictators? Well, That's I want a dictator. You want to be? Yeah. Yeah. He only respects other strongmen. You know, mm -hmm. everyone else is just people to manipulate. Um, he also has transiting Uranus square his Mars, um, uh, and that that could be like becoming angry, uh, mad outbursts. You know, something could send him off. Um, but so so that's a possibility. Um, and then the final transit that stands out for me, Andre, is uh, transiting Pluto is still opposition his. Of Venus and will be retrograding back. It'll be well within the five degree orb um, in November. You know, it it can bring up shadow material interfering with our likability or our ability to connect. And uh, I I think that uh, it could it could certainly help to bring out the vote. Uh, you know, for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. Now there's a positive side to that Pluto Venus too, but he he should be in therapy. Honestly, I, I mean I think everyone should be in therapy. Everyone should should do some deep self exploration, and um, if they you know to be a responsible member of society, uh, not only for our own happiness, but it helps our ability to cooperate with others, get along, solve shared problems. He's certainly not an introspective person. So um, he's not going to get the benefit out of that Pluto transit. No, no. Yeah, that's true. It's true. And, uh, you know, if I can add anything to what you said, it would be, you know, the, the Saturn, I concur, because the Saturn operates out of that degree. Although, for example, it operates out of that degree for, for Biden, too. So you have to keep that in mind that once it got there, it's there until it crosses through, which doesn't happen until next year. But one of the things that I think a lot of astrologers are missing, and I don't know why, because it's so obvious to me, is if you do the fine uh, look, you see that Jupiter is stationing at 21 degrees Gemini in October, directly opposite his moon. Now, that is classic overreaching, overconfidence, and all of the Jupiter archetype uh, corrupted energies. That's true. But it's also opposite an election planet. That moon is in the fifth sign, fifth house of his chart, Jupiter opposing it. To me, that's a loser. You don't want Jupiter there. Jupiter helps you much more in trines. When he was elected, Jupiter was trining his son at inauguration. You know, it was in Libra. 
And it's pretty much the only safe place for him because he so misuses the Jupiter, put it anywhere else, and it's opposing or squaring something, and he goes over the top like what he did with back in the Bill Barr days. He realized Jupiter on his moon, the problem is that it was opposing his sun too. So Jupiter on his moon, he thought, oh, great, Mueller's not going to get me. I'll go and extort Zelensky. Then he got himself impeached, and the whole thing went down from there, right? So to me, that opposition is not good just before the election. It's something that I would, in fact, use as a negative about winning, even though you may say, well, yeah, but it's close to his son too, and you could count it that way. But it's the opposition. You know, you've got that Uranus in the middle of it, Uranus, sun, moon, you're triggering all of it. Uranus, by the way, in 2020 was squaring his Pluto. And that didn't help him win because Uranus, in that sense, is running against his fascist impulses. So why would it do any better squaring his Mars? I don't understand the logic of that. To me, that's a stop sign. You know, when you in squares, maybe one possibly could help you. They're not helpful aspects uh, when, when it comes to winning. And the thing you said about Pluto, Pluto and Neptune, those two, they're super late in their respective signs doing a quincunx to his ascendant. That's dangerous health energy. I, I've seen that aspect numerous times show up as a health breakdowns. In fact, I'm amazed that he hasn't had more happen, although I've seen a few things that lead me to think that he may be the one with more cognitive problems than, than Biden based on some of the things he said. But as far as the breakdown, it hasn't happened. So bottom line, though, I don't see his chart as a winner in, in, a, in 2024. I mean, there are people, some astrologers even say, look, Venus is, Venus is next to, I think it's in, in Sagittarius, next to his moon. And they ascribe everything to that. But, for example, if you've looked at progressions, right around the election, he has progressed moon square Pluto. That is not an aspect you want at election time. In my opinion, my experience of Moon, Pluto, no, that's not the one you want. That to me uh, spells, you know, conspiracies, yelling and screaming, I've been ripped off again, etc., etc. Then I'm, I emerge victorious, in addition to the other things that are going on. Yeah, really good points. Yeah, really good points. I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, um, but... Uh, if he loses, it will be a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, <laughs> he he will instantly become irrelevant. Uh, you know, Adam Kinzinger said something the other day. He said, "In ten years, no one will admit they ever liked Trump. Oh, like, no course. politician. He he will just disappear, and and people will look back at him as the worst president of all time, and 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 the exact opposite in every way of what you want in a president." True. Yeah. I, I'm with uh, you 1,000%. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so this is a very dicey time. You know, the, the real driver of this, I believe, is the U.S. Pluto return, of course, the Pluto conjunct Pluto. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's the shadow of the United States psyche and of the Homo sapiens psyche, which is greed and aggression. <laughs> and that's that sums them up. You know? Yeah, well, and, and by the way, the Pluto is also domination. Like the U.S. is founded as a, there's lots of Uranus, too, in the chart because it's just below the ascendant line. It's got that power because it crossed the line and all that. So the country is very Uranian. But remember, back then, the slavery was accepted. There was a strong upper class dominating the lower class, especially in the form of African-Americans. And so whenever you see Pluto, racism tends to show up and that's in fact the whole MAGA movement is nothing other than that in my eyes it's uh, the repeat of the civil war in the 1860s yeah, yeah. you know they even bring in the thing well why aren't you keeping the statue of general lee well because he lost no he didn't well no he did they will not admit it and trump will use this a lot to say they should restore the names of the forts there's this confederacy thing in the air oh, oh, yeah definitely yeah he's in a long line of of all that yeah I think that's it. There's also kind of religious bigotry toward Catholic Mexicans who mm -hmm. are coming up. You know, uh, they think that's such a catastrophe to have more Catholics coming into the country. You know, the industrial leaders of the United States and Canada want a lot more immigration. It doesn't matter what party's in charge. 
the the industrial machine needs more workers and right. and and we're going to keep getting more immigration and right. so um th they play a vital role you know maybe the speed of it is hard for people this, the demographic shifts is hard for people but you know i mean it's part of how capitalism functions is just mm -hmm. We need yeah. workers. We're bringing in workers, and uh, you know, it's. I would recommend people just start eating different foods from different cultures, and and the dances from different cultures, and the music, and start to see ourselves more as global citizens, appreciating all sure. people. You know, sure. this sort of one part of it. There's also the health insurance companies are, don't want. Uh, Public Medicare, you know, the average American play, pays double for their health care what the what the average citizen of industrialized countries pays for their health care in the form of slightly higher taxes that goes toward the public Medicare. Mm -hmm. the, um, they pay double because there's yeah. middlemen, insurance companies taking profit off of that. That though, these essential services should not be in private hands. It, it should be something that is given by a compassionate government, not by a self-serving insurance company. So that's that's another one of the factors. Yeah, and then you know people that don't want to pay their fair share of taxes. It's insane to lower taxes for rich people. You know. I know. I know. You know, so, you know, you know. I'm wondering you know, what came to mind when you said that was that um, one of the quite a few things that I noticed about that Sibley chart really reflect in the U.S. Back in the Obama years, Pluto was uh, squaring the U.S. Venus at the time. And or sorry, uh, Pluto is in, in the U.S. chart is in or sorry, Venus is in Cancer. Right. Pluto was in Capricorn squaring it. That led to a reconstruction of the health system. And so we may, we may want to look at when it, that next happens, right? And one of the uh, movements would be, since the Venus is in Cancer, Venus is in Cancer ruling the sixth in Taurus. That was the logic, right? I remember. So uh, Saturn going through Aries will square that again. Uh, and so then in the uh, upcoming years, this is, you know, one of the ways in which you can surmise something, and it's only one uh, piece of data, but it was an astrologer that made a really good point saying that Saturn in Aries has concurred with gun legislation. And so, of course, then I said, well, if there's going to be gun legislation, that cannot be a Republican uh, uh, you know, administration because they're not going to do it. We're going into Saturn and Aries, right? But it's that and the square to the American Venus, suggesting that in 2026, when the square happens, could be when they do some kind of health something, you know, to solidify it or... Uh, you know, make it happen. Uh, that's the one thing about squares, where Pluto's the reconstruction, Saturn is what you're working on and trying to, to make real. Uh, you just don't want it there when you're trying to get elected, though, <laughs> in my opinion. Right, right. Yeah, well, let's hope that happens, because it, it makes for a more secure society, you know, when, when people don't have to worry about oh, yeah, no, for sure. having for sure. to choose between saving a limb and saving their house or saving grandma and saving her house, you know, totally. uh, and, totally. and it, it, it is cheaper. <laughs> People don't realize that. So, um, you know, to have the government administer that. Right. Right. No, that's, that's totally true. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. So should I just, uh, just show your, your viewers, some of my thoughts on the sort of some of the driving energies behind extremist political viewpoints. Sure. Uh, before you do that, though, before you say that, are we in? Uh, what agreement are we in around? Do you sense, or are you leaving it up in the air around that there will be a democratic administration come hell or high water? Or are you saying, well, that's assuming only if Biden isn't running? How would you put it if you were to say, here's how my I prediction right now is that if Biden stays in, Trump will win. Okay. But. If Biden was running, I, I would definitely vote for Biden, and I would try to get everybody out. But it only matters in the swing states, remember. 
So right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. It, exactly. It might yeah. come down to 200,000 swing voters in swing states. Correct. They're Correct. being targeted already by Russian propaganda. The, mm -hmm. the security services in the United States are have, have already put that information out there. Right. And, uh, but I believe that any other Democrat will beat Trump. Will beat Trump. That, right. That's my feeling. Right. And since there you're saying that. Other, yeah. And since you're saying that Biden and you feel like you'll leave, so then that's that's the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's that's how I feel. I, I think he he he's been on full speed ahead for fifty years, you know. He's right. a, you know, he's got the ambition of any politician and that Pluto opposition Jupiter, you know, he, he may not go out easily, but I think at a certain point he'll wake up and go, Okay, all right. There's a lot of love around him. No one's going to stab him in the back or anything like that. Um, he, he deserves a happy retirement. And what a beautiful day it will be if if his successor uh, beats Trump. So let, I'll be thinking about you, Andre, and all, all our listeners uh, when that happens. <laughs> right. So th there are some other good people. I mean, Cory Booker, I like a lot. Um, Amy Klobuchar. Mm -hmm. She's immensely likable from the Midwest. Uh, mm -hmm. Either of them would be good too, but I, I don't think that'll happen this round. Uh, I don't vote for Kennedy, honestly. <laughs> he said that he said COVID was that he said that the Sephardic Jews and Chinese didn't get COVID. He he leaned over and said this uh, at a dinner. I mean, is he insane? Hey, hey, I you know I respect people that didn't get vaccinated. You know, it's a it's a it's a medical decision that was kind of a new technology. You know, I I don't have judgments about that. But this, I mean, millions and millions of Chinese died from COVID. I don't see how an educated person could say something like that. Um, I think that might have possibly been the part of his brain that got eaten by the worm. But anyway, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I know that's uh, if you listen carefully, a lot of wackadoodle, wackadoodle talk, because when you start questioning standard vaccines, now you could put the entire school system in danger. I mean, this is just nutty. You know, you're trying to go back to before we had vaccines, which was much worse, you know, so uh, you're focusing on the small numbers. And, and uh, by the way, I mean, any look at any drug that they're trying to peddle on TV and the, there's this long list of things that can go wrong, and uh, some, for some people, right, it uh, it happens, but most of the time it doesn't, and that's the way it works. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Oops. Um, oh, okay. Can you see that? Oh no, I have to. I have to do this over yeah, here. Here we go. Yeah. Now, now it's there. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm really enjoying this, Andre. Thanks for this opportunity. Really oh, great. Oh no, it's a, it's a pleasure. Let's do it again. Why don't we do it again after the election? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a lot of new information for people, but, you know, I'm very interested in depth psychology and transpersonal psychology. And, and uh, Stanislav Grof was the world's foremost researcher in LSD assisted psychotherapy. And he was able to, to discover that, you know, there's the personal layer of the unconscious with traumas from infancy to the present unmet needs then there is a deeper layer called the perinatal which is uh our memories of the birth process and and our confrontation with death birth and death are mixed together in the psyche below that in the unconscious are transpersonal layers like karmic memories ancestral memories uh uh, family memories, uh, mythological experiences, and so on. And um, astrology uh, aspects and transits can shed a lot of light on some of these uh, memory systems in the psyche. So that's the complicated part. Now, the perinatal layer of the psyche, Groff found, tends to emerge when people are doing deep self-exploration in four clusters of experience. The first he calls the basic perinatal matrix one is based on these uh, good womb memories. Uh, and this is overlayered with uh, images of heaven and paradise. 
and union with the divine with the great mother goddess with god these are just faces of the one universal consciousness uh the the labor begins the water breaks um and the fetus is being contracted uh by the you know pressed in by the uterine walls but the cervix is still closed this is a no exit situation and this is strongly connected with saturn uh, so when Saturn's highly activated in our life by transit, we can tend to be influenced by this memory, this part of the birth process. The, the third perinatal matrix connected with Pluto is when the cervix is now open and the fetus is being pressed through the narrow birth canal by powerful uterine contractions. There's an activation of aggressive energies. There can be uh, sadomasochistic feelings demonic archetypes uh scatological encounters like and and then purification by fire those are all themes that have been known to be associated with pluto for a long time long before groff's discoveries independent discoveries and rick tarnas made the these connections of these planetary archetypes with these stages of birth now this is just the end of this introduction which will be really apply to um sort of political uh extremism in just a sec and then finally the the crowning and completed delivery is experienced as an ecstatic rebirth and liberation from suffering from the th threat of of uh, death because the birth is an actually life-threatening experience babies do die during it or get brain damaged mothers as well uh, can die um and uh feelings of salvation awakening forgiveness uh redemption and so on and connected with uranus so what are some of the these deep perinatal roots of extremist political theories now i just just for full dealt self-disclosure i consider myself center left slash green right. small g green i i agree with everything the green party says and stand for i mean as i think i do i mean i haven't read their whole platform but uh certainly what i hear from elizabeth may the canadian green leader and uh, but i wouldn't vote for them in a federal election like this because i don't want trump to win you know i think we have to be strategic that's how i do it exactly. um so saturn so there's this deep memory imprint inside of us of being constricted and oppressed and and inhibited marginalized already from this unhealed birth memory and that is a deep component in conspiracy theories a sense of victimization persecution and then people think because they're not doing introspection they don't have access to powerful breathwork techniques it like Groff breathwork or holotropic breathwork or psychedelic assisted therapy or others then they think it, it has to be coming from the outside some external force is oppressing us and I'm not saying there isn't oppression in human society and history there certainly is but when white males feel oppressed I mean come on you know it's time to do some introspection man we chopped down all the forests we killed all the wild animals you know we were we farmed every inch of land and, yeah. and we've got enough food now so now that's now the way forward is to do some introspection turn backward and keep all the benefits of modern technology we don't have to keep keep all that do our good work in the world be responsible be as happy as we can in our lives but we also have to put some energy into introspection and looking at the unhealed wounds in our psyches and in the collective psyche of our species so uh that's one of the driving forces and conspiracy theories now another one is this dynamic stage of birth labor there's still a, a lot of suffering in this memories when people are reliving these memories in sessions but the cervix is now open and we have a sense that we we're making progress and we can do something about the situation there's a feeling of empowerment to struggle and fight back against the oppressive forces 
So you'll see this in like QAnon and and all the you know the Proud Boys and so many other sort of violent uh, conspiracy groups. A sense of titanic struggle against powerful, aggressive, perverted, evil, immoral, and disgusting forces. All the things that I just talked about. You know the scatological disgust, the the sexual arousal, which is caused by the suffocation in the birth birth labor um, uh, during this dynamic stage of labor. So people are projecting these memories of things that happened to them during the birth process out into the political world. They think it's all happening out there when it it's something that happened to them when they were really vulnerable as a fetus struggling in the birth process. Mm -hmm. So outrageification, you know, that's the easiest emotion to evoke in people when you're trying to manipulate someone to stay on your website, send in money, you know, vote for your candidate and buy the, the products on your website. It's usually survival products or vitamins sort of based, all based on fear, you know, a desire to burn it all down. Evil forces which pose a special threat to children. This you see this in a lot of conspiracy theories, and and this has a strong connection, plausible connection with these birth memories because the babies are you know the heads being compressed and constricted in the birth canal. There's suffocation. There's suffering, life threatening, you know, suffocation. And, and so that's why people are predisposed to believe that um, there's these forces that are a threat to vulnerable people. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't ever happen, but not it doesn't happen in the same degree and magnitude as, as some of these conspiracy theories seem mm -hmm. to think. So people can have a deep and penetrating insight below the surface of society to this hidden seething forces like you know like we know things that you don't know about the dark forces in history like hillary clinton drinks children's blood and stuff like that i mean who the who the hell can be believe such a insane thing they're projecting their own unconscious material their own id that many people Get, get sucked into these are they're probing below the surface but they're not going far enough to see their own psyches you know and and they're not going beyond the birth process to the even deeper transpersonal levels of reality where all of the all of the physical world is a kind of a game created by the, the divine consciousness you know so right. they're not going that far so right. yeah, sorry. Any any thoughts? No, just a quick because when you were when you were saying this, it it struck me that this links to the American uh, society right now on the Pluto return and the emergence of these forces, and we're grappling with them. And what people are afraid of is that uh, Pluto's returning this kind of crazed insanity where all these people are projecting their, as you say, their womb experiences out into the open most of which is just made up conspiratorial garbage. And of course, the thought is, well, does this mean this is where we're going? I say no. I think that the uh, it's just it's a phase that the country is going through only to purge itself of the the demons rather than thinking the demons are going to take us captive and we're not escaping. <laughs> we're going to be yeah. here forever. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it's often the one who's the, the ones who are yelling about the evils over there, you know, that are actually that are the most possessed by these things. I mean, nobody's trying to be bad, you know. I mean, it, people act unconsciously based on their unconscious wounds, and they do things that aren't the best for themselves in the long run or for the people around them. So self-exploration, turning inward, introspection is really some, a new virtue, a new ethic that needs to be built into western civilization you know mm -hmm. uh that this idea that a person's righteousness can be measured by how rich they are that's that's a core protestant value you know 
um, that that's insane. And that's a reliable recipe for planetary disaster because we're consuming more than the earth can support. But that said, you know, there's enough resources on this planet to give a good standard of living to every man, woman, and child on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's just that we're wasting huge amounts of money in the arms race and so many other crazy things, you know. So the, the solutions are, in the end, are psychological. Like if humans could live in a more peaceful way, a more sustainable way, we might have a chance of survival. Yeah, so just a couple more quick ones here, Andre, if you're uh, if you're willing to. Oh, so totally. Yeah. Now, Uranus, so this rebirth matrix associated with Uranus transits. So, you know, we, a rebellion against tyranny. That's a that's a a good quality in people. We want you know citizens that can get along and cooperate with each other, but also will stand up against dictatorship. But Trump is the dictatorship, you know, in this case, they've been manipulated. Um, so people have a pressing yearning for deliverance. It, it, there's a drop, you know, they don't feel happy and they, they feel constricted from these perinatal leftovers in their psyches. And there's a strong desire to get out of the birth process to overcome the fear of death that was imprinted on them during labor. And so they're susceptible to messianic demagogues and strongmen dictators who promise liberation and salvation. P people come along and say, this is the enemy. It's always an external enemy. You know, it's the Mexicans uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, the, you know, the socialists or whatever. And I alone can save you from. And, and then they, they can manipulate them to do violent things and, and, harmful things that when really the real liberation can only come from within from having a psychological psycho spiritual breakthrough within our own psyches mm -hmm. um then neptune this is this is the neptune is connected with unity and openness and and no boundaries so people can be very spaced out when they're influenced by Neptune too much, incredulous. They can be brainwashed to believe anything. Some of the weirder conspiracies uh, are fit into this category. Like, you know, uh, they can be manipulated. Their openness to alternate realities and alternative facts. You know, Trump's Trump's <laughs> communication person, Kellyanne Conway, I think coined this term, right? we have alternative facts and and this really fits trump's mercury square neptune right oh, he, totally. his whole life is alternative facts he's he he totally. just he he'll crank out lies as easy as saying my name is donald trump it just it's just part of the way he operates mm -hmm. there there's a positive side to mercury square neptune too but unfortunately he's not manifesting it so the more weird the better uh, so that th those are sort of Neptune, Neptunian uh, roots of conspiracy theories, and then finally, Jupiter is another major one. People who feel kind of marginalized, sort of bored in their lives, or they don't feel particularly happy through their conspiracy theories, they can have a sense of having special knowledge and insights. It's an opportunity to feel superior to others. I know something that you don't know. <laughs> I read it on the, you know, this website and, you know, and, and it's just like, take a course, man, read a book for God's sakes. So, you know, we know that an education level has a direct correlation with a liberalization of people's views in the world. They tend to be more open and accepting of other cultures and religions and even political points of view. Um, they can cooperate with others, uh, you know, more moderate. Um, but education alone is not enough. I think that deep self-exploration is equally important. We need to return these technologies of the sacred that our, our ancestors and other cultures have employed for millennia, you know, like responsible use of psychedelic medicines, breathwork, meditation, uh, trance dancing, fasting are uh, some of the 
ways that people have used to enter these. Um, I, I just want to mention that, again, if you're interested in in all of this, including the psychological realms that I've been talking about and also how they they shed light on the world of culture, um, you know, you might be interested in my 22-week course starting this fall. And we also have a YouTube channel, Archetypal News Network. Um, if you're watching this on ANN, check out Andre's uh, uh, YouTube channel and be subscribed to it. What's what's it called again, Andre? Proactive Astrology. Yeah, please subscribe to that one. And, and if you're watching this on on uh, ANN or on, on and Andre's, please subscribe to our uh, Archetypal News Network. And this, you might be interested in checking out, you can just Google this, Perinatal Influences in the U.S. Culture Wars. That's one of my videos where I go more into some of the specifics of how these perinatal matrices influenced our views around the pandemic and, and also Trumpism. Yeah, so... Very thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. That was a pleasure. Oh, it was wonderful. That was that was great. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, our next uh, our next meeting whenever that is. Uh, we can wait till after the election, or maybe it'll there'll be reason to do it before. We'll see, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a real, real pleasure, Andre. And yeah, we're we're neighbors too. Hey, eh? you're you're in Seattle. Where are you? Uh, Victoria. Oh yeah, just so just this two yeah. two three hours from here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This part of the world, yes. Where the, yeah. the, where the reasonable people live. <laughs> well, you know, we have our we have our issues too. You know, we have our shadow side too. No, yeah, it's it's food. it's it seems like it's almost uh, a period that is affecting the whole world because, well, you could blame the U.S. and say the U.S. Uh, you know has a cold and everybody gets a cold as well that kind of thing but you know in europe and in you know lots of places in israel there, there's a lot of division right now uh, and then there i think you can look to where the planets were in the second world war and then during the civil war etc but uh i think it's a phase you know it's a phase we have to get through yeah basically. it's a tough phase all right yeah yeah it's difficult yeah, I, I wrote an article on the uh, Mayan macro astrology. If anyone's interested in that, it's part of my PhD dissertation that I did for Ubiquity University. We also have a graduate program in Groff Studies. I'm, wow. I'm the administrator of that. If anyone's interested in getting a master's or PhD in Groff Studies through Ubiquity, <laughs> just, right. just uh, contact me. But if anyone wants to read that, article actually i i recorded it and it's on our youtube channel oh good uh, good yeah the mayan the mayan prophetic mayan macro astrology it's in six parts so check it out and it, you know we're in a major death rebirth phase is how to describe that and yeah fits the fits the pluto return to a t probably also pluto leaving capricorn has that feeling as well because capricorn is very much the primordial government sign it's why I think when it was in cancer, it, it 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 was correlating with all that fascism impulse in the 1930s, and then the switch to Leo, which is now Aquarius, is the coming out of that. And we just have to hope that it's not as rough as it was back in the 1940s to get to that point, right? But yeah. it yeah. switches it away from that obsession with having the top down, you know, Emperor Hirohito, you know, mm -hmm. who's like God, and then mm -hmm. issues the orders or you know, Hitler, Mussolini, Franco, and now in the modern era, the people like Putin and Trump and uh, to some extent others, but they're probably the two worst at the moment. You know? Yeah, yeah, let's hope that. I, I think we're doing some things better. We are slowly evolving and growing, but we're all in this together, you know. We've got to make it work. And yeah. uh, Absolutely true. All right. It was a pleasure. We'll say goodbye to everyone until the next time. Thanks, everybody. Good luck with the election. Bye, everyone.